Okay, this video is a special request I've had on asking how to do a an effect in After Effects. Uh, it was based on this commercial where you see a camera kind of dullying and towards somebody's face, and you see a reflection of a television screen in in the in the eyes of the person. So I'm going to add a reflection to a moving camera here into somebody's eyes. So I'm going to import some footage here. I have the uh, the dolly footage here, and I have the, uh, some footage, just some random footage I'm going to be putting in the eye here. So, and this is going to be an After Effects. So we're going to do this. I'm going to put my I'm going to grab the portion of the clip that I want. Okay. Here we go. Actually, starts here with the dolly move when the dolly starts moving, and ends right about there after the dolly move. We'll stay on the eyes for a second and see the reflection in the eyes. Now with this shot, we really didn't too, get too close to the eye. I mean, you could track this all the way up to the face. This is 1920 by 1080 footage. If this was 5K footage, we'd be able, 4K or 5K, we'd be able to zoom up a, a little bit closer. We'll do a little bit of zooming up, but not a terrible amount because it would, it would, uh, it will actually decrease the quality quite a bit. I'm going to drag this down on my timeline. And here's the clip that we're going to be using here. This just dollies up to this person's face, and we're going to see a reflection in this person's eyes. I'm going to grab just this random footage that I have, drag this in. I'm going to make this footage last the same length as uh, as this clip down here. So as we drag this into our source monitor, we're going to put an endpoint, and I'm going to do a three-point edit here. I've got an endpoint and an open outpoint. Don't have an outpoint in here. I'm going to hit Shift three, go to my timeline, home to go to the beginning, endpoint, jump to the very ending of the of the clip. That is the frame past the ending frame. So I'm going to arrow back one frame. So I'm ending on this exact same frame here, outpoint. This is three point editing. One point, two point, three point with an open ended out point. It'll fill this in until it hits the out point on my timeline here. I'm going to change my source patch to this upper clip here, hit period, drop it in, and I've got two clips lasting exactly the same length. I'm going to highlight both of these clips. So I'm going to right click on both of these and uh, we'll highlight both of them like this. Right click and replace with an After Effects composition. After Effects will open after an hour. Once After Effects opens, it's going to ask me where I, where I want to save my After Effects project. I'm just going to put this on my desktop right now. I'd recommend putting it into your production folder. Um, but I'll just call this I Effect. Save it. And it's brought over my two clips. It's created a composition here. And it's brought over my two clips. Here are my assets that it's using in this composition. So I'm going to turn off the, uh, the top one right now. Click that eyeball so it shuts it off so I see the one below it. Turn my um, my resolution here to auto, so it will cut down the resolution as it needs to uh, um, to expedite the effects. And now I'm going to do a track here. I'm going to go to the very end here, the very end of the timeline, and I'm going to go up to my little arrow here to rearrange this for motion tracking. Oops, for motion tracking right there. And I'll bring up this little tracker here on the side. I'm going to do this track motion tab right here. I'm going to click on this and it'll add a little tracking point. And what I'm going to do here is zoom up to this. I'm going to hold down Alt on my uh, keyboard and scroll on my mouse. Scroll up to zoom up. You, you know, when you grab this tracking point, you want to make sure you don't grab it out here and you don't grab this little crosshair in here, make sure you grab it right here. This is how you grab this tracking point and move it. I click and drag it. And this is an eyeball here, so this is going to be pretty easy to track. I'm just going to put this thing right in the middle. I'm not going to have to change really the extremes of this uh, of this tracking area. I can if I want to. If I wanted to get it, uh, actually, let's make it a little bigger right around the size of the eyeball there so this tracks really well. But it's probably not going to be necessary on this. It's going to be pretty steady tracking, pretty smooth. It's not a lot of handheld jittery stuff, so I can expand um, the area of tracking here. It's going to try to track that whole eyeball right there. Let's do that. But what I want to do is uh, base this on rotation as well. Or, or and, and what I want to do as well, since this is zooming out, this is just not a um, the camera is actually moving further away from the subject, so I'm going to want to do scale as well as position. My camera doesn't really rotate, so I don't really need to do rotation, but I am going to do scale because this is going further away from the camera and the scale is going to change. You click, it adds two of them, and with these two markers here, with these two tracking markers, it's going to it's going to be able to determine scale here. So, by the way, the, the shortcuts I'm using when I've zoomed up here is H for hand and it moves your composition where you can see it. V will get back to my arrow. V is in Victor, and I grab my arrow here once again, grabbing it in the center, not in the outside, in the center here, and not grabbing the crosshair. It's really important to Alt scroll up to this. I'm going to increase kind of the feathering off of the outer 
edge pixels. Increase this so it's got this is everything that's going to be tracking, and this is everything that's going to be tracking there. I'm at the very end here, so we are going to track backwards. Say I went to the end because the eyes are closer and it's going to be easier to track this. I'm going to hit shift question mark just so it zooms out and it looks like I've added some goggles here. But uh, I'm going to click this little analyze backwards and it will start analyzing backwards, tracking the eyes. Now watch as the dolly starts and you'll see these things going further and further away. Still locking to the eyes. Now that that's done, we've got a nice little tracking path here as we get closer here and further away. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add this tracking information to a, a to what's called a null. I'm going to go up to Layer. I'm going to keep this tracking window open here, but I go up to Layer, New, Null Object. It'll add a null inside of the my composition here. This is basically kind of a nothing object. There's nothing visually here, but it's just something to attach this tracking data to. An object here. We're going to do Edit Target. Now that I've added the null, we'll edit the target. We'll pull this layer down and tell it to add this information, this tracking data, to my null. Null number one, hit OK. That target has now been chosen, and this is super important. Make sure you click Apply, because that's right now it's targeted, but it has not applied it yet. So you hit Apply, yes to X and Y dimensions, and now that null, that one null, is tracked to the data of. And notice how it gets smaller and larger as the dolly gets closer to and further away from the lady here. So now we've got that information applied to the null. All that tracking data is on this object right here. And now we can use this to add to some footage here. I'm gonna, so now that that is applied to that null here, we're gonna, I'm going to go and turn this object on right here. And actually I'm going to, let's do a bit of a crop here. I'm going to crop this video here. I'm going to go up to this little, you got to make sure the clip is selected. It is selected and I click on this little rectangle tool here and we're going to crop out a portion. Actually, let's do a circle because we're going to do the shape of the eye, so I'm just going to do a little tool. Actually, square is fine. So we're going to circle it in there anyway. I just want to get rid of those letter boxes here, so I'm going to click up here and drag. I'm going to hold down my shift key to keep it square, and I'm going to hit V for my arrow tool. All the nodes, the corner nodes are selected. I'm going to move this over a little bit because they walk into the center of the screen right about there. So now they walk into the shot here. Let's make it right about there where they end up. So now I've got that footage of them walking in there. I've got that masked off just that portion of the screen. So I'm going to select this clip here. I'm going to hit S for scale. I'm going to scale this down. I'm going to make it smaller. And my anchor point is moved is, is centered, but I've moved this mask over, so I'm, I want my anchor point to be. I'm going to click this pan behind tool right there. This is my anchor point tool, and move this to the center portion. And I'm going to hold down and move that to the approximate center position there of my masked image right there. Hit V for my arrow tool. I'm going to move this over the eye here. S for scale. Grab my scale and move this down to where it's just kind of covering the eye right about there. H for hand. Let's move this over. Alt. Hold down scroll to scroll up. V for my arrow and move this over the eye. See so I can make this even a little bit smaller. I'm going to go down to about 8%. I'm going to oops, click on here and type in 8, go down about 8%, or even smaller, let's go 6, it needs to be smaller for this eye, there we go. Well, let's go to the end and make sure that this fits over the eye just fine, and it does. That whole image kind of fits over the eye. Alright, now that this is kind of in the approximate location, I'm going to, and uh, I'm at the very end of the video here, I'm going to grab my parent here and drag it over to the null. It's going to parent the scale and the movement to, uh, to the null's attributes there. Now as I move here and notice this gets further away and it tracks to the eye. I'm going to hit shift question mark to show my entire image. I'm going to drag this back and now the image locks to her eye and zooms with her eye just fine. Now I need to create a mask for this so it kind of fits the eyeball there or even we can have it do one of two things either reflect in the in the iris or in the entire eye. Just for the heck of it, let's do the entire eye, which means I need to make this a little bit bigger, my scale, because I need to have it reaching both ed both sides there, so we can see this a little better. I'm going to scale that up to 4% there, 3%, right there. That fits the entire eye there, and we'll see more of the image. I'm going to move that up a little bit, change its relative location, and it still tracks according to the null. And now let's make a mask. I'm going to turn this off. And to make a mask, we're going to use a dark solid object. I'm going to go up to Layer, New, 
solid. It's going to make this a complete dark clip. You can do a complete black clip if you want to. It can be whatever color you want to. I'm just going to use the shape of this object to create a mask here. I'm going to hit OK, and it makes this gray solid. Shift question mark to zoom out. That's over my entire image, so it's just a gray solid. And I'm going to do. I'm going to scale this down so it's approximately the same size here. Move this over. I'm just grabbing these corner nodes and holding down Shift while I'm doing it. I can actually make it square like this if I want to. Just like that. I'm going to make it larger than the image itself. Oops, that's not the image because that, that's the null. Uh, so right right up here is the image here. So I'm going to turn the, down the opacity so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to hit T with this layer selected. Uh, let's take this down about 40% so I can kind of see this gray faint square. Now I'm going to grab the edge and scale that down so it's just slightly bigger than the image. I'm going to hold down Alt and scroll up to this so I can kind of see what I'm doing. H for my hand to move it, V for my vero, for my arrow tool. I'm going to turn off this video clip below it and make this mask the shape of the eye. So I'm going to go up to my pen tool with this layer selected. I'm going to go to the pen tool and I'm going to click in the eyeball here and drag it across to create the first thing. Get used to this. I'm going to undo that. Watch this. Here's my pen tool, layer selected. I'm going to click and I'm not going to let go because it'll add a corner node. It'll be the kind of sharp corner node. You want to do a curved node because the eyeball is curved. So you click. So if, look, watch what happens if I just click and I go click again. Look how it does this triangle eye. See, and it cuts out just a portion of that shape for the eye, but it's not the right shape. It's very hard edged. So you got to click and drag just a little bit. Don't go nuts and go clear the freak out like this. Just, just a little bit. Just click and drag and then a lot of little curve click and drag, click and drag, see how it's the shape of the eye now, click and drag, and up here and click. And I'm going to do it in the other reflection in the complete eye, replace the eye completely instead of in the iris. The iris is more the reflective part, but still I want to see more of the image, so I'm just going to, but you can do it just so it fits just the iris. But now I'm going to change my Bezier nodes here, get this shape so it fits the eye really well. There we go, that's looking pretty good. Let's turn the uh, opacity up to 100 so you can see that solid. So basically we created this solid object over her eyeball um, and now I'm going to feather the edge a little bit. Go under masks here and find the mask feather and click on this and let's feather it by about 5 pixels. Uh, let's go more. 20 pixels. See what that does. See as we drag this clear over, look how soft that gets. I'm going to make this just, we're going to soften this up about by let's try 67 pixels. That's a nice soft edge. Maybe a little too much. Let's go. Well, this image kind of fading out, so I am going to fade it in. Go 135 pixels. There we go. All right, now I'm going to grab my dark red solid here. I'm going to grab this and pick whip it, parent it to the null. So now watch what happens. This object now moves with her eye. It zooms out with her eye, and it changes size with her eyes there. All right, so now that we've done that, we are going. I've, I've got this dark red solid over the top of the of the jib shot. Let's turn this on. You can see the jib below it here. I'm going to actually scale that down now. Let's go under scale. All right. So now I want to composite this image in this mask that I've created. And the way you can do that is you've got the jib shot. I've got this shot right below the the dark red solid. I'm going to go to toggle switches and modes. Click on that, and we're going to tell this. And, and under the modes here, we've got this track mat option here. I'm going to track mat this one to the mat above it. Whatever's above it, it can use it as a track mat. I'm going to click on this and say, use the alpha mat mat of the dark red solid above it. Click, and now it puts that video in that mask there. So now we've got that video in there, and it moves with her eye. It's matted into her eye here. And now if we want to, we can take either the mask or the jib, either one, and we can change the opacity, and it will change the opacity in her eye. I'm going to hit the dark red solid, and you can do this on the jib as well. And I'm going to turn down the opacity here, about 60%. Now we're seeing kind of a reflection in her eye there. See, now the mask is looking a little too soft, so I'm going to change my mask softness here. I'm going to feather that down, just maybe about 40 pixels there. And now we've got that reflection in her eye. It's in our complete eye instead of just in her iris, but now we see a video reflection going in her eye there. And it moves. And if we change your mind and we want it just in the iris, we can do that as well. Right now I'm doing it in the eyes because we didn't zoom up close enough to her eyes to really see the reflection all that well. But you can see the video footage moving in her eyes there. 
Um, okay, so now if we want to put it in her second eye, that's quite easy. Just grab these two clips here, hold down Control and select both those clips, and now Control D will duplicate them. Now I've got a duplicate two clips here, and I'm going to, with those two selected the duplicates, I'm going to move it over to this eye. And now we've got it moving in her eye, got the exact same reflection going in this eye as well, but we're going to have to change the mask because the eye is a little bit different shape there. So I'm going to select the mask of the of the mat here and change this to fit her eye shape here. And there we go. So we've got it all the way in the eye and probably one other thing we can do here with this image just to zoom up even a little bit closer to improve the effect. First of all I'm going to have the reflection start turning on right about here. So I'm going to actually grab all this stuff here, all these layers, and I'm going to right click and pre-compose them and put them into their own layer. I call this reflection and you gotta make sure that this is moving all attributes in the new composition don't worry about check marking any of these here uh, just hit OK and it adds it's collapsed all those into one uh, file here into one composition and let's say I want the reflection to turn on right about here I'm gonna select this clip and do alt left bracket key it'll set an endpoint there now I can go to the opacity of this pre of this comp here and uh, turn on a keyframe right there. This beginning keyframe right there is going to start. I'm going to hold down Shift, page down to, and page down one more time. That skips 10 frames at a time. Page up and page down goes one frame at a time. But Shift, page up and page down skips 10 frames at a time. So I'm going to hold down Shift, page 10 two times. Add another keyframe right here. This is my. I, this turns on the keyframes and adds one. Adds the first one for you, and this adds a new keyframe right there. So from this point to this point, it's going to go from zero opacity to 100. So I got to change. I'm going to land on my first keyframe. Change this to zero. So it goes from zero, and now that second keyframe is 100. So it goes from zero. So now it goes from zero to 100. You can see the video footage fade in there. Right there. And now if we want to exaggerate this effect a little bit, I'm going to grab all this whole thing here. I'm going to right click and pre-comp everything there into one final clip. Move all attributes and we'll call this final zoom because I'm going to zoom up to her face here. So this is all compressed down into one clip. By the way, if you need to access those, you can just double click. There it is, double click. And it brings them up in these different layers here in different comps. So now I'm going to go to the beginning and we're going to do a position and zoom animation here. I'm going to arrow this down, go into transform, and I'm going to start a, a positioning keyframe and a scale keyframe. I'm going to hit, going to hit end, or to go to the end of the timeline, and I'm going to add a position keyframe and add a scale keyframe. And now at the beginning here, it's already all the way zoomed out. If I hit end and go to the end, I want this to be zoomed in. So now I can, I'm going to grab this node right here start dragging, but after I start dragging, notice how it changes the size here. If you hold down shift, that constrains the proportions. So you grab it first, start moving it, and then hold down shift. I'm going to zoom up to her face a little bit, move it right, and move the position right there. So now that's going to zoom out. You can actually see the wireframe here. Watch this. The wireframe of the image. Look what's happening as we move this. You see that's actually zooming up as well. That's way too much for 1920 by 1080, but that's the concept there. Now I zoom up and really see what's in her eyes there. That's Hit shift question mark, zoom out, play through the effect here. And now that gives us some extra dolly move there as well. And zooms right up to her eyes and we really see the reflections in her eyes there. This will work really well if you zoom way up to the eye. If you can get the dolly to dolly way up and you keep the person in focus, this would work quite well for the reflection in the eyes. And uh, like I said, usually the reflection is occurring in the iris in the darker part of the eye and not this the, the, the white whites of the eyes out here. But I just wanted to zoom that up so you could kind of see really what's what is in the eyes. But anyway, uh, that's the tutorial on that. If you have any questions, post them and uh, we'll talk to you later. Thank you.